Hi there, PCAN8697, uh, regarding your question on importing STL to NX12 and converting to a uh, solid body. Uh, there are several layers to this in your uh, example here, uh, especially since your STL file actually contains a facetta geometry that is originally represented by um, multiple uh, number of uh, solid bodies. Uh, in order to address uh, this, I thought that it would be a good idea to um, kind of record an AVI or video instead of uh, trying to describe this in text. So here we go. Let's start by importing. Oh, prior to this, I should say that um, I also urge you to upgrade from NX12 to the latest NX version since there has been a lot of things happening that makes this uh, workflow a lot of uh, more efficient uh, where you have to handle less steps etc uh, and are able to handle more types of geometry if you like. Um, so it's a, a strong recommendation to upgrade uh, your system. Okay, nevertheless, here we go. Uh, we start by importing your STL data. And uh, when I normally do this, I do this, uh, I start by importing a JT file, uh, since I need to know quickly what I got to deal with, especially if it's a large file, um, or if I do not know what I'm dealing with. Um, because that will just rawly rip everything in from that uh, uh, STL file, if you like. However, in this case, we'll do it as a convergent straight off. Uh, we will not be using part cle automatic cleanup, uh, since it might exclude areas that we want. Uh, we have set minimum facet number to 1, uh, since we do not want to exclude any of the geometry here, or facets. We want everything represented even the bad ones. Let's kick this off and let's see what the system will do for us. Uh, now remember that this is actually importing all those faceted geometry as um, uh, convergent bodies that we are able to handle uh, directly in an X. And this is what we get. However, we get a very long list and in order to deal with that, um, I would probably start grouping this stuff. I will not start by grouping all the stuff up here, uh, but let's have a look to see what it is. We can see that, well, you know, this is uh, thin-shelled uh, convergent bodies. Uh, they are not really solids. I assume that you would want solids out of this, so um, in order to kind of reverse engineer this, I would, I would kind of recommend to um, group your data a bit. And I'm going to start by doing that. So I'm going to focus on the hook down here because uh, it's a little bit easier to demonstrate. Uh, I will select everything that is in there and I will group that. Uh, so we do a former group and we do a feature group. And uh, we say, we can just simply call that hook. Let's call it hook and pulley. There we go, and we say OK to that. So that means I now have a group down here which I can handle. Let's say I want to hide it, I can hide it. And let's say I want to unhide it, I can show it. So, And we're going to do the same with the rest of the features, because I want a feature list that I am able to handle. So let's feature group that. Let's just call that all. And that will compress the whole list. Uh, let's put the hook at the end. And, and we got the hook to deal with. Our hook and pulley, actually. Uh, which contains all the, all the uh, convergent bodies that is forming that area. Meaning, I can hide uh, the full pulley or <laughs> the whole lifting device there and focus on only the hook area here. Okay, so uh, these are convergent bodies and I could uh, use them as is, uh, depending on the accuracy. Uh, but let's say, for instance, um, I actually want solids of this. Um, so that would, of course, be possible uh, in, in uh, uh, the later versions, even easier. Here it takes a little bit more commands to get to those solids, but uh, we will get there. Um, 
so uh, if we do the reverse engineering and have a look at, at our data, we can do the uh, fit surface. Let's focus on the, um, it's a little bit timely since I'm running this old version on, on a, uh, from a USB drive, so bear with me, might take a little bit of time. Sorry, not fit curve, uh, we want fit surface. And as you can see, we have a bunch of various uh, basic shapes we can uh, create by this uh, fit surface and also the powerful fit freeform. All of these evolved in later versions and really powerful. Uh, let's say, let's focus on the uh, left hand side on this pulley for instance. We select that and we say um, uh, create it. And we could have fit conditions where I can actually uh, uh, define the radii. We can see that radii is a weird value here. Uh, maybe we want that to be, let's say, 23.4. Then I can say that it would be 23.4 directly. Uh, and it should be 23.4, which would be better. Uh, we say OK to that, and we're going to hide our uh, pulley here. And we can see that, well, I said I wanted this to be a solid. Well, this is where you have to uh, kind of walk the extra mile or the extra steps, if you like, uh, in NX12. You do not need this in NX uh, later versions. Uh, we're going to do um, some uh, boundary planes here. Uh, since we did a cylinder and we can home uh, surface back to surface sorry I'm, I'm a little bit rusty on x and x12 i'm more later versions uh, there we go so we now have our solid body here and we can continue dealing with that if we like so uh, we could also move that into the hook if we like uh, or you can create a separate uh, like um, before and after group if you like. Um, the thing with this is that since it's grouped together uh, and uh, let's show all of that including the geometry we created. Let's show it together with the uh, total assembly if you like uh, uh, with parts although it's not really an assembly. We can now move this around so uh, Let's select that and let's do a control T, uh, move. And let's say we want to move it up or we can move it down or anywhere you like. And we can say okay to that. We have now moved it. Great. Hide. And let's also say for the sake of it um, that we want to create some holes um, in a array around here. We and since this is solid, so we can create, like, let's say an extrude. Uh, we create a sketch on top of that face there. We say OK to that. And we say, hey, I want a circle, let's say, up here. OK. Uh, finish that. And let's say we want to pattern that curve. We want a circular pattern out of that, and we want it around the center point. Let's say OK to that, and we say finish to that. Now, this was not part of the original uh, geometry, but uh, this is what we create anyway. And it's all based on uh, the geometry that we had, oh, sorry, show uh, originally. Uh, let's see here now, let's say we want uh, that one that is rep representing, oh, sorry, hide again. Uh, this is uh, one of the differences between uh, NX12 and uh, later versions. Um, you can obviously like uh, reprogram these uh, uh, to, to show and hide instead of suppress and unsuppress as, as here. Um, so, uh, there you have it. Uh, you can uh, move stuff around, you can create sketches, you can even create uh, uh, solids directly with the reverse engineering module, should you like. And I hope that this might help you in your future endeavors. 
remember this is a very crude STL and it requires a bit of work to to um, uh, to work with this type of data but uh, once you handle it uh, a bit you will be rather quick with it and remember in the later later versions you will be really quick in handling this type type of data anyways I hope that this helps and and uh, brings you forward in your endeavors and uh, that's all uh, from me for now. Uh, so all you good people out there, take care, be safe, stay healthy, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care for now. Over and out from Fred. Bye-bye.